Hey everyone, it's Hannah and welcome to my channel. Welcome back. If you've been here before, hey. Um, this video is part of a mini series that I'm doing to help those of you who have a small business, creative business, crafty, handmade business. How many times can I say business in the first minute of this video? Too many times. I am the business owner of The Corner of Craft. I make handy the stitch markers, but I also dye yarn in colours inspired by Dungeons and Dragons under the label Chromatic Yarns. Um, there's a couple of boxes there of stuff and that package is gonna get on my nerves. I'm just gonna move that real quick. Um, but yeah, those boxes back there have yarn in. Anyway, um, if you'd like to know any more about my business, um, feel free to watch the first video in the series, which was actually the last video in the series, um, which is all about how I started my creative business, how I got things going, I've been a business owner for seven years and yeah. So if you happen to like this video or enjoy my company, feel free to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and follow me on social media if you'd like to. Links can all be found in the description box below and yeah. I asked on Instagram when I first mentioned um, that I was going to be doing this and asked what you wanted to know and I had a fair few people reach out to me and say, oh that's annoying. Um, I mean, they didn't tell me it was annoying. Well, they could have done, but I wouldn't have listened. Um, but I had a few, fair few people reach out and say, or ask me what were the things that I wish that I knew before I started my business. So, I have compiled a list of 10, which is a nice round number. Um, but pff, they might not apply to your business, but these are just things that I wish that I knew before I started. So. Pop the kettle on, grab yourself a cup of tea, pause the video, go get yourself a cup of tea or coffee or whatever, a little snack if you want one. Let's go through these ten things. If I look down, it's because I've made notes in my licorice all sorts notebook. But um, I'll try not to look down too often. I don't have a cup of tea today. I have a glass of orange squash because I'm secretly a child. So, my first point is that you may lose a hobby. Now, this varies from business to business, of course, but um, the, as the expression goes, if you do what you love, you'll never have to work a day in your life. Now, while in theory that is true, in practice it is less so, in my experience. Um, let's take bead weaving, for example. I used to do that a lot just for fun in my own time. I used to make myself pieces of jewellery, I used to make myself things. Now I find myself only bead weaving for work, so I only tend to make stitch markers. Um, which isn't, you know, a huge problem. I still find it enjoyable, it's just not a hobby anymore, if that makes sense. Because um, I've decided to turn my hobby into a job. While this doesn't apply to everything, because I do still have hobbies, obviously, like knitting and stuff, I just didn't know that the only time I would be bead weaving would be for work. My second point is that you might feel you're not working enough. I never feel like I'm working enough, ever. Because I make things as a large portion of my job, it doesn't actually feel like work and I don't actually know when to stop working for the day. We'll take yesterday for example. Yesterday I got up at quarter to seven. I packaged orders until half past eight. I went and had a shower until nine o'clock. And then I, as in I had a shower, dressed myself, made myself a cup of tea, put away the veg boxes, you know, till nine o'clock. Um, and then I dyed yarn from nine o'clock until four o'clock. I took off about an hour to an hour and a half just to chill and let my brain unwind. Um, and then from about half past five until I went to bed, I was bead weaving. So, um, yeah, and I went to bed at, went to bed at 10 to 10. It was an early night last night. But um, yes, it's difficult to stop. Whereas if I had like a traditional job, um, it might get to five o'clock and I might say, cool, I'm done for the day. I'm not being paid past this time, therefore, 
switch it off, let's go and chill out. It's difficult to create those boundaries, I find. I'm a bit of a workaholic, especially because my full-time income is from my business. Um, I feel the pressure <laughs> to keep working because that's the only time I'm going to get paid, if that makes sense. But yeah, I can't do a work day like yesterday every day because it's completely unsustainable and I would just get so burnt out. It's like the days where I spend 12 hours bead weaving. It's ridiculous. I can't do them often. I don't do them often, but when I'm really in a bead weaving mood, I just kind of go, go, go. But yeah. So my next point actually segues quite nicely, like I've planned out this video or something. Your business can take over your life. Once again, this might just be me. Turns out I'm a bit of a workaholic. Last year, I really struggled with balancing having a life with my business. I was turning down socialization. I was turning down hanging out with friends. Obviously last year, we'll get onto this year in a second. And yeah, I was really struggling with making things for when I was doing craft fairs and shows, yarn shows, and um, also trying to keep up with weekly and towards the end fortnightly shop updates. Um, it was intense and I completely burnt out. This year has shown me that what I actually wanted last year, which was all of the time that I have this year, isn't actually what I wanted because this isn't enjoyable. Because especially in the beginning of lockdown it's starting to ease a bit here in the UK who knows if we'll go back into lockdown here in Nottingham but um yeah I let my business take over my life last year a little bit um maybe because it was a factor I could control in my life and I was also having driving lessons and I got married towards the end uh so everything was just quite intense but this year has shown me that I can balance things better. We want to work smarter, not harder. I haven't yet mastered that, but that's the goal. Yes. So point number four is it can actually be quite lonely. Now these are all negative. I've realized that these are all quite negative, but they're not necessarily. They're just things to be aware of and to look out for. Oh, I forgot to put earrings in. Oh, how annoying. Anyway, but yeah, these are just things to look out for. It can be lonely. When you're in, I don't know, I guess a lot of people have been working from home so they might understand it, but um, when I had a more traditional job working in a shop or a cafe or whatever, I had co-workers to chat to, I had something to talk to about, I had someone to talk to every day other than my husband, as much as I love him. Sometimes he's the only person I talk to all day. <laughs> And it's nice to have some variety. And it's really difficult to make friends as an adult when your hobbies are quite solitary like mine and crafting. Um, as an adult you tend to make friends through work. Um, or if you do sport or anything like that. But I don't really, I don't do sport. I mean look at me, do I look like I do sport? I do not do sport. But I, this is one reason I'm so grateful for the online community that I have created. Um, because other people, other businesses who are also yarn dyers or in the industry, um, I really truly do consider them colleagues. We're all about community over competition. You're going to say, hear me say that quite a lot throughout this series. And yes, I don't know where I would be mentally without all of you lovely lot chatting to me or, you know, so while I don't have traditional co-workers, I have co-workers that live in my phone that I can message and turn to if things get tough and yes. Make sure you create your own little community or foundation around your business because otherwise it, it can get a little bit lonely as I briefly mentioned in my previous video um, about when I, my time in Germany. So we're getting on to more businessy stuff now. Um, marketing and SEO is important. You could make the most beautiful thing in the world and put it on Etsy and unless people find it, 
they're not going to buy it. That's where marketing and SEO comes in or search engine optimization. Now, I will be having specific videos about these things throughout this series. That's the point I need to look up SEO a bit more um, because I'm, I'm a bit rusty on it, truth be told. But let's turn my page. Um, marketing is the action or business of promoting and selling products, including, including market research and advertising. So, to me, I count this as posting on Instagram, sending out my adventure party newsletter, which I'm slacking on and need to get better at. Um, even things like using my stitch markers or knitting with my yarn and showing them on my podcast, that's still technically marketing. Um, yeah, things like that. This video technically could be counted as marketing, I suppose. SEO for me is a little bit trickier. So search engine optimization is the process of maximizing the number of visitors to a particular website by ensuring that the site appears high on the list of results returned by a search engine. So basically you're using your tags and your descriptions and your titles and things like that to appear high up in the list of search engines uh, or in a list on a search engine when somebody searches for that thing. So for example, a stitch marker when put on, oh my lights changed, when put on Etsy needs to have things relating to knitting, things relating to crochet, stitch marker, progress keeper, whatever else you can call it, um, all within it. So, regard, so whatever people search for, your stuff will come quite high up in the list. I don't know if that made sense. Like I say, I'm a bit rusty on SEO. I'm leaning very heavily on all my other types of marketing that I do. Oh, I need to get better. So point number six is underselling can be very damaging. It's very easy to look at your competitors and see what they're charging and think, well, if I charge a bit less than them, then my products are going to sell. This isn't necessarily the case, which seems weird but actually does make sense. Now I'm going to have a whole separate video about how to price uh, pricing items and such, so I won't go into it too much here because this video is already long enough. I really hope you did take my advice and made yourself a cup of tea. I wish I'd made myself a cup of tea. The squash isn't quite hitting the spot in the same way a cup of tea would. Basically, it's really important for you to know your worth and know what your time is worth. Um, underselling or undercutting your competitors prices not only cheapens the whole market but you give customers an unrealistic expectation on what to expect when it comes to your products. Once you have an established customer base it's very difficult to raise the prices and what if all of a sudden you get the chance to wholesale somewhere if you can't afford to wholesale you're not pricing right right now basically. Like I said, I'm going to go into more details of that later on. But while we're on the subject of finances, point number seven is keeping track of finances is so important. When you're starting up a business, it can be very easy to spend a lot of money. And while admin is a really boring part of running your own business, it's actually a really important part of running your own business. Some of the most boring things are super important. Not only does it mean that you're not going to be running yourself into debt and having barely any money to survive, but you can also keep track of things that are selling well and things that are bringing in money so you can then spend more in your business if that's what you want to do. Um, I have a great little spreadsheet system that I will be talking about more when I do my dedicated finances video, which I'm sure you're all super excited for. Like I say, admin, completely necessary. Um, but yes, without my spreadsheet system, I think if, when I do my taxes, I mean, I've already done them for this year because I'm super organized, but um, it would probably take me days to do instead of hours to do because all of my info that I need to fill out is just there and the spreadsheet is ready to go. It's ready. Um, yes. Okay, we're almost there three more slots left. 
Now's the time to pause the video and actually make yourself that cup of tea that you said you were going to make in the beginning but didn't make. I'm not going to do that because the builders next door have gone quiet so I have to get through this video. Point number eight is prepare to adapt your business. I did not know that I, I don't know, I set up the corner of craft to sell crocheted items. Obviously since then I have adapted my business so many times. One of the things that I sold that I completely forgot to talk about in my last video in this series was that I even made crochet dice bags with a little bead woven charm on it that was super cute but no one bought them so <sighs> you have to pivot your business sometimes um, which just makes me think of that clip from Friends with the sofa and Ross from Friends shouting pivot. Sometimes it can take a while for you to find your niche, find your spot in your market. I feel like I'm about to go diving. It's worth it when you get there. Um, especially in the early days, try not to be too restrictive on what you're selling. And yeah, it's fun to branch out and try something different every now and then. If you see or feel excited about doing something that's different in your business, just, just take the leap. That's what I'm doing with this video series right now. It's a completely different thing that I'm doing within my business. And I don't know if anyone's gonna watch it. I don't know if it's gonna help anyone, but I'm enjoying it. And ultimately, that's all that matters, surely. Kind of. Point number nine is uh, impost imposter syndrome is real. Um, for those that don't know, I've got a nice little description of what imposter syndrome is written down here, so I'm just gonna read it once. Uh, it is the constant belief that you don't deserve the success you have or that you're not good enough to sell what you create. Um, yes, as Mark Twain said, comparison is the thief of joy and it's so true. It's so easy to look at these curated feeds on social media and see that people are doing really well, they seem to be selling loads of stuff, making loads of money, and then you, you don't feel like you match up or you can't compete, which is a, it's not a silly thing to feel because you know feelings are valid, but it, you can't compare someone whose business has been running for 10 years to your two month old business. It can be really inspiring to sc scroll through Instagram, but let's use yarn as an example because I die yarn. I sometimes, or used to, more than I currently do. I used to scroll through Instagram and think, oh, I can't dye delicate speckles. Oh, I can't put colors together as beautifully as that. Oh, I can't dye as well as that person. Maybe I shouldn't start my yarn dyeing business. And what I've learned is, it doesn't matter. I am not those businesses. I'm not, I'm not trying to compete with hedgehog fibers. Let's use them as an example. I, I, can't dye delicate speckles. I'm not very good at dyeing solid colours, but you know what? That doesn't matter. Just because so and so over there can put beautiful colours together that I would never think of doesn't mean that the colours that I dye are bad. It doesn't. My colours are beautiful too. And I don't know, someone could be looking at the yarn that I create and think, oh, I wish I could do such chaotic splotches of colour like Hannah does, because that is kind of what chromatic yarns is evolved into with the chaotic splotchy speckles. I love it personally. But everyone has their own style, everyone has their own take and if you like what you're doing someone else is bound to like it too. Just have faith in yourself, have belief in yourself and that comes very nicely onto point number 10. It's possible, you can do it. I started my business seven years ago and I never thought that I would ever be able to do this full time and here I am two years into doing this full time as my full time job and it it still baffles me every time I have to try to explain what I do as a job. It's a very complicated thing. I believe I'm written down as an internet business proprietor on my wedding certificate because they didn't know what else to put me down as. I don't know how I feel about that but we'll go with it. I did have loads of other points, but I thought point number 10, let's end on a high. I still have statuses that pop up in Facebook memories saying about how, you know, one of my dreams is to make things, sell cute things for a living, or I wish that I could just run my own business, or things like that. And 
it's astounding to me that I'm actually doing it. Now, I'm not about to sit here and say that, oh, if you start a business today, in a month you'll be able to do it full time. I mean, no, unless you're fantastic at marketing and crazy talented. Um, but even after a month, I just don't know if you'd build that sustainable. Anyway, I'm not even saying that going full time in your business is a goal that you need to have. It might, you know, you might always want to be a, I don't know, a doctor who does embroidery on the side. I don't know. I imagine doctors have very stressful jobs, especially at the moment, and would need something therapeutic like embroidery of an evening. Um, if they ever have time. Um, but yes, you know what I mean. I'm just saying that your goals or dreams are possible and that sounds really cliche and it sounds like the end of a Disney film and oh, so let's just end the video there before I'm not very good at the, you know, speeches. Um, oh, that kind of hurt my elbow a little bit. But please feel free to let me know what your business dreams and goals are in the description box below. Or if there's anything that you wish you'd have known before you started your business, also feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Did I say description box before? I definitely meant the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you'd like to follow me on social media, please feel free. Links can all be found in the description box below. And yeah, I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye. So if you'd like to know how I started my business, Feel free to click the video that's just over there and uh, then you can watch it. Watch the evolution of the corner of craft. I know that you're secretly interested, very secretly.